Hey there, it's John with Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm gonna explain how to return non-adjacent columns in any order with the filter function. So this is a great question that came up from Melanie, a member of our Elevate Excel training program, and she'd found a solution for this, but it required her to return the columns in the same order that they're in in the source data, and she wants to return them in a different order. So we have a solution here, and I'm going to explain this in this video. And as you can see, we have a spill range created by the filter function here, and we are returning the columns out of order. So we're only returning a specific number of columns from the source table over here. And as you can see, we're returning the product column before the category column, but in the source table, the category column is before the product column. So we can use this technique to return the columns in any order, and limit it to a specific number of columns. I'm also going to show an example that's a little more advanced where we have uh, the dropdowns here in this header row and we can change these to choose which column we want to return. And that will update our filter function here to return that column. Again, they can be in any order and any number of columns from the source data. All right, so let's take a look at how to write this formula. So in this cell here, I have the final formula using the filter function. But as you can see, this is a bit more complex than your normal filter formula. And that's because for the array argument, we're using the index function to return a specific number of columns and those columns in a specific order. So I'm going to explain and break down this index formula. Before I do that, I wanna give a shout out to my fellow Microsoft MVP, Chan Du. Uh, he shared a different formula that used this index function technique and it inspired me to create this solution. All right, so let's take a look at how to write this. So in this blank cell down here, we're first just going to start, I'm going to type and reference the table, the, the source table here and hit enter. Now, of course, that's just going to return a spill range with the entire contents of the table. But we want to limit this to just a specific number of columns and again, put those columns in a specific order. So for that, we can use the index function. So we'll type equals index here. We'll tab into that. Our array is going to be our table. So I'll reference the table here. That's going to return the entire table. But we're going to uh, limit that with both the row number and column number functions. So for the row number, we need a list of the number of rows in the table from one to however many rows we have in the table. We need to reference that array in index. And to do that, we can use the new sequence function. So we'll start typing sequence, we'll tab into that. Now for sequence, we just need to specify this one argument for the number of rows. And so in order to do that, we need to count the number of rows in the table. And for that, we can use the rows function. That'll return a count of rows for our table. So we'll reference our entire, entire table there. We'll close the parentheses on rows. We'll close the parentheses on sequence. And that again is going to give us a list from one all the way to the number of rows in the table. So that's our row number argument. We'll type a comma. For the column number argument, this is where we can also specify a list of column numbers. Now, if we don't do that and we just leave this blank or put a one here and close the parentheses and hit enter, we're going to get our entire table or just the first column of our table returned here. But again, we want to reference a specific number of columns and put those in order. So to do that, we can list out those numbers in curly brackets. This creates an array. So if we just did one, two, let's do one, two, three, all separated by commas there, and close the curly brackets, if we did that, that will return the first three columns from our table. Now the cool part here is that we can also change the order. So if we wanted this, let's say instead of one, two, three, maybe we want five, three, four, something like that, where we return column five, then column three, then column four, we can do that as well. So we'll hit enter here, and that will return those columns from our table. Now it's important to note that your table does not have to be in column A. So it just so happens that my table here starts in column A, but these column numbers are not the column numbers of the sheet, they're the column numbers of the table. So if we were to move the table over to start in column C or something like that, we would still use these same numbers to return columns five, three, and four from the table. All right, so we're going to use this for the array function or the array argument in filter. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy the formula text here so we don't need to rewrite it. I'll hit Control-C to copy it. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. 
We'll go back up to this cell here and I'll delete this and we'll rewrite the filter function. So we're gonna start typing filter. We'll tab into that. Again, for our array, we're going to use that index formula. So we have that here. We're then going to type a comma and for our include argument, this will be our filter criteria. For this example, we want to filter down our table uh, for the customer name column. So we'll reference the customer name column here in our formula, and we'll set that equal to the value of cell I3, the company or the customer that's selected in cell I3. So we have that there. We can also uh, reference the optional if empty argument, we'll leave that blank for now and close the parentheses and then hit enter. And of course, that's going to spill out our filter function here. And I should also note here that the columns, the column or columns that we use in our filter criteria do not need to be in our array. So in this case here, we don't have the customer name in the array that we're returning here, but this still works. And you can also have multiple criteria here for your uh, filter criteria, and this will still work. Now there is one potential issue with this formula that we need to solve for, and that's inserting or deleting columns in the source table. So for example, I'm going to insert a column before column C here. And as you can see, the results of our filter formula have now changed. And that's because we have these hard coded values here for the column numbers in the formula. So the formula is still returning columns five, three, and four. Those are just different columns now. We've shifted all the columns over to the right. So this can happen if we insert or delete columns. And this requires additional maintenance that we don't necessarily want to have to do. So uh, in order to solve for this, I have another solution on this sheet here. And this uses the same formula, same basic formula. However, instead of those hard-coded values in that array or that list, we're now using the xmatch function to return that list. And so what xmatch is doing is it's doing a lookup and it's looking up the values in cells H5 to J5. So I've referenced this range here of multiple cells and it's looking those up in the header row of our table over here. And it's going to return the column numbers for each of those values. So it returns an array. And you can actually see that if you select the entire X match function, hit F9 on the keyboard, that will evaluate the selected text. And we can see it's returning columns three, one, and six to that array. So instead of hard coding those values, we have a formula returning these results. And I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that because I don't wanna keep that. And so what that means, if we hit enter here, is that we can now insert and delete columns. So I'll go ahead and insert a column here and the results will not change. They'll still be the same because of course, uh, our X match function is just looking up category in this uh, row, I'm sorry, in this row, the header row over here and returning the column number. So I can go ahead and delete that and this will still work. The other thing we can do here is I've added uh, data validation lists or drop down lists in each of these cells here. And so we can just select and that data validation list contains a list of all the header names from our table. And we can just select that header name. And that's going to reevaluate, of course, the X match formula to return the column number here to the uh, index function, which will return that uh, to the array of the filter function. And we get the results right here. So this is much more dynamic and doesn't require any maintenance. And even if you wanted to uh, add an additional column of data here, I'll just copy this quantity column over. Let's just change it to category. All we need to do here is we can go into our original formula and for X match, we can just extend this out to include K5, go ahead and hit enter. And as you can see, that spills out to all of our header rows here that we referenced in X match. So definitely a bit more of an advanced solution and formula here. I'll put a link in the description below this video where you can download the file and study this. And of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below this video. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you